Okay, we're going to ask everyone to please take his or her seat, and we're going to get going. So everybody find a seat. So first of all, I want to welcome you to this event today. This event is sponsored by the Frederick Douglass Neighborhood Association. And if you're new to the city or you don't know the story, we have a sycamore tree on what used to be called High Street that once stood in front of the stables of Edward Bennett. And before and during the Civil War, it was a stop on the Underground Railroad. So Edward Bennett would go to abolitionist meetings and he would say, well, I heard there's going to be a delivery of wool this afternoon at 3 o'clock. And the carriage would pull up to his stable and there'd be bales of wool on the top of the carriage, but underneath the bales of wool were hidden slaves and they would hide in Mr. Bennett's stable during the day so that they could travel under the safety of darkness at night to go to Canada and to freedom. In 2004, that tree got so big and so heavy that it had to come down because it was a danger to the buildings around it. But they left a stump in the ground, and a new little sycamore tree has grown up right where the old one grew. Some of you might have seen that across the street, the old Kresge building is going to be rehabbed into apartment units by NeighborWorks. And guess what they're calling the building? The Sycamore on Main. Oh, As a yeah. nod to Edward Bennett and Frederick Douglass. So when the tree came down, the street was renamed Frederick Douglass Avenue. And in 2014, you know how you always sit around and say, somebody should do something about that. <laughs> well, there was a lot of land that was kind of dirty and kind of junky and kind of overgrown. And a bunch of people said, somebody should do something about that. And the next thing you know, we did something about it. And that's why we have the little community garden, flower garden, in back of the church. So Willie Wilson, who's going to set the stage today, is one of our board members. I also have a lot of my other members here. Janet Trask is here. Cindy Gray is here. Ray Henningsen, who is our treasurer, is here. Who else is a member? Um, Sherry Lee is here. John Druzinsis is here. So we're all the folks that got together and said somebody should do something um, about it. So welcome. <laughs> welcome, welcome. As I said, I also want to introduce to you Amanda. Where did Amanda go? There she is. Amanda is with Mass Humanities, and they're doing a documentary on all of the readings in Massachusetts. So say hi to Amanda. And who's the handsome young man you brought with you? This is Jeff. Jeff, are you married? <laughs> I just have to ask. And, and today is Jeff's birthday. And today is Jeff's birthday. Oh. Excellent. So all of you should have copies of the speech in front of you in English. And you'll see in the left-hand corner there are some people who have chosen to read a paragraph in a different language. And Willie is going to explain to you why we chose to do that. So you listen to me. I'll be the master of ceremonies. So the first thing I'm going to say, for example, is, OK, readers 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, Willie, Jean Bradley Durban Court, Criola Sumitas, uh, John Druzinskis, and uh, Jean Bradley Durban Court, please line up where Willie is, because you're going to be the first five readers. Then we'll do the next five. Then we'll do the next five. So if you see a paragraph that doesn't have a name next to it, that's your cue to jump up and say, oh, I want to read 17, or oh, I want to read 18, or oh, I want to read 19. We read this speech as a community because of the power of community. After we finish reading the speech, we handed out evaluations that Mass Humanities would love you to fill out. 
And then you'll see in the back of the hall, we have pie and whipped cream and iced tea and a few other um, goodies to enjoy, okay? So let me introduce you to Willie Wilson. Some of you may know him. He's a retired school teacher from uh, Brockton High, one of the famous people in the room. I also want to thank our elected officials who are here. I see Michelle Duar, our state representative, is here. I see Ann Beauregard, our city councilor, is here. Susan Nicastro, a city councilor, is here. Mark Lindy from Southeast Regional Votech is here. And I did send George Clooney an invitation, so if he comes out, oh, yeah. All right, Lily, it's yours. So you're going to speak into this mic and this mic. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It's just um, so glad that um, that you have shown up. Uh, I, to my recollection, this is the first time we've been inside. And again, thanks to Miles and the generosity and hospitality of Messiah Baptist Church. Um, thank you. Frederick Douglass was the most important African-American of the 19th century and one of the most significant writers and orators of, the, of American history. And um, as you probably know, he's written three autobiographies. The first, The Narrative of the Life of Frederick Douglass, An American Slave. The second is My Bondage, My Freedom. And the third is The Life and Times of Frederick Douglass. And next to the narrative, which is my favorite, is the speech that we're going to, um, we're going to read. Uh, the speech is called, What is to the Slave, the 4th of July? It was delivered July 5th in 1852 at Corinthian Hall in Rochester, New York. Frederick Douglass was invited there uh, by the Rochester Ladies Anti-Slavery Society. There were about 500 people in the audience. They all paid 12 and a half cents to hear him speak. And the speech is, it's just wonderful. All of you are going to be reading a paragraph. Please, that copy that uh, Lynn gave you, take it home. You have to read the, the speech in, in its entirety, and I think you'll, you'll be impressed with what it says. Um, again, the first part of the speech praises what the Founding Fathers did for the country. His speech soon develops into a condemnation of the attitude of American society towards slavery. And then he speaks to the captivity of the enslaved people, their merciless exploitation, and the cruelty and torture to which they were subjected. Uh, the, the speech itself uh, highlights the hypocrisy of Christianity as practiced by the American churches at the time. Douglas wanted his audience to realize that we are not living up to uh, the proclaimed beliefs of the time. So he cites different things. Now as we go through the speech, there were a couple of paragraphs that I wanted you to, to just uh, uh, reflect on. Even though the speech is 167 years old, it still speaks to a lot of issues today. Because Douglas was against slavery, but he was also for the enfranchisement of uh, women. And uh, up here before me, we have some of uh, articles and exhibits and paintings from our previous exhibits. Um, and you'll see one picture of Amelco Cabral. And when Douglas first came to uh, uh, Massachusetts, he lived in New Bedford, 1838, and uh, he first encountered many Cape Verdeans who were involved in the whaling industry in New Bedford. Then we have a picture of Susan B. Anthony. He was uh, one of the first men who endorsed the, uh, the voting rights for women. And, uh, and then we have a picture of Daniel O'Connell, the great orator and, uh, and, and legislator for Irish rights. And, uh, and then we have another one of, uh, of so I, what the, the point is I wanted to point out to you and illustrate his universality. Because some people say, well, he was just for African Americans, and that wasn't the case. He was for all people who were treated poorly. And, uh, and that speaks to why he's so popular today. Paragraph 30, when you read it, brings to mind the current debate concerning um, immigration. Paragraph 45 reminds me of the surge of African nations when they achieved their independence in the late 50s, early 1960s. So it, when, you, when you read it in its entirety, I think you'll come away with why it's so important and why it's included in the curriculum uh, for colleges and high schools here in the, in the country. 
In the end, Douglas wants to keep his hope and faith in humanity high. He believes that the end of slavery is there and that there's no way uh, to stop its progress. And you kind of hear that in the, uh, in the speech. So with that said, I'll, I'd like to read the first paragraph. All right. And Willie, while you get yourself organized. So while Willie gets himself organized, if anyone signed up for two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Will you line up over by the piano? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right in order, OK? So two is Jean Bradley, three is Criola Suidas, four is John Druzinskis, five is Jean Bradley, six is Criola Suidas, seven is Rita, and eight is Mark Lindy. So right over here, and we will begin. Paragraph one. Mr. President, friends and fellow citizens. The task before me is one which requires much previous thought and study for its proper performance. I do not remember ever to have appeared as a speaker before any assembly more shrinkingly, nor with greater distrust of my ability than I do this day. The papers and placards say that I am to deliver a 4th of July oration the fact is, ladies and gentlemen, the distance between this platform and the slave plantation from which I escaped is considerable, and the difficulties to be overcome in getting from the latter to the former are by no means slight. That I am here today, to me, a matter of astonishment as well as of gratitude. Thank you, Willie. Really. Uh, my name is Jean de Dunoncou, and I will be reading the Haitian Creole. Je dis à nos célébrés quatre juillet, la fête anniversaire indépendance pays où, et puis liberté politique a joui en tant que citoyen. Je dis ça pour où, c'est un confet pack pour tout bon dieu. Dat je ne je dis à faire retourner dans un moment qui était un jour de délivrance pour. C'est pour ça que j'ai marqué le commencement de l'autre année dans l'existence du pays. Les femmes pensent tout que la République peuple américain fondée a 76 ans. Citoyens moins, contre un pays où la jeune, ça veut dire, il est toujours dans la période en enfance. Moi, je répété encore, contre ces conseillers. Il y a un peu de soi dans la parole ça. Et il y a besoin d'un peu de soi. My name is Tina Cardoso, and I'll be reading Portuguese Creole Creole. So, primeiramente, no te vi, te falar sobre Frederick Douglass, um só que era uma tentativa na passada de te ajudar as escravos e direitos de humanos. No te vi, te ali, uma declaração de Frederick Douglass que escreveu sobre o que que te significa e 4 de julho, dia de independência da América, para um escravo. Está ali a página 3. Okay. Caro cidadãos, a história é simples. Assim, 60 anos atrás, as pessoas deste país eram assunto das britânicos. O estilo da soberania do povo que ainda não tinha nascido. Você estava debaixo do Corão Britânico. Os seus países chamarão o governo britânico de o governo deles. Inglaterra como patria, mesmo estando tão distante. Calcando limitação e pessoas. A gigante maduro e considerando sabia Correto 
Good afternoon. My name is John Brzezinskis, and I'll be reading um, my paragraph in Lithuanian, which is one of the oldest uh, spoken and written languages in the world. It actually has its basis or its roots in Sanskrit. Bet jūsų tevai, kuri neprimo atmados šios dienos išdėjos, apie virsapyvę deklagumą ir absolutą jo veiką prabūtų atmanome, kad jis skirsi nuo namo virasybės, dėl ką į kurį tu sukumą ir tesingumą apribumojimą. Iki šio jie džiaugiesi, kad išreiškė nesitingas, nepagrįžtas ir prepražiausimas versabybės primonis ir apskritė toks, koks neturi būt tiliai pateikęs. Man beveik nereikia pasakyti, kad pelėčiai, kad mano nuomenė apie šias priemenas visiskas atinka jūsų tėvą nuomenė. Toks subtitkimis mano nuomenė negiam nebūtų vertas. Tai nebūtų jomoj, jo ryte, kokie dalė galėčiau paimti, jei gyvena per didelis ginkai. Dabar sakydimas, kad Amerika yra teisinga ir Anglija neteisinga yra labai lengva. Visi gali tai pasakyti, dar tai nemažai kaip kilnios drąsus gali netingai atsipirti Anglijos tyrionoj ir Amerikos kolonijos. Tai yra madinga ir padaryti, bet buvo laikas, kai pasikaiti pris Anglija ir kolonija prisazystas labau bandė vyras sėlis, te kuri tarė dėvą savo dieną užrašti masatuvą ir sukėlė pavojingai vyrų ir dėsinė pris nesatinga siltnas pris stipra prasas o prisipaustas prisipausta čia slypė nopelnė o tas kuris į visų kitą atrodo mūsų dienanoj atrodo nepratingas laisvas prepazyšte kad su mūsų žmonės kuri slovna jūs tėvo darbuose bet norių damo tiesti. Lithuanian John Rusenskis. Žemate, du nuku heišim kvėl. O kaisio, dominašio, se pagai kai femenų kai kai sažės lėvė kampi. Zansetų jų te metimasijos, jų te vienu atėtėjų ta konvektyvių situacijų, tėl mangav, kai jų patrėjų su solisijų, si jų te jų tėjų 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 tė Ka souvent, il y a toujours une solution dans une situation où il y a une domination. C'est là que l'idée de séparer les colonies avec le gouvernement et le gouvernement de l'Étropole est de prendre le sens. Je dis que c'est comme ça que nous sommes capables de faire des gens qui sont timides, qui ne sont pas d'accord. C'est avec un peu d'énergie que nous sommes exprimés des accords à l'opposition. Mais malgré tout, oui, tout compte mal taillé sous l'idée d'indépendance de l'IA. Machine ou la révolution, t'es descendu pour traîner tout le reste du pays d'ailleurs. Je vais te donner un coup de chien créole. So I'm going to read in English. This is Criano Zanidas, Kvrdian Women United, my organization. On the 2nd of July, 1776, the old Continental Congress, to the dismay of the lovers of ease and the worshippers of property, lauded it that dreadful idea with all the authority of national sanction. They did so in the form of resolution, 
We seldom hit upon resolution. Drawn up in our day, whose transparency is at all equal, it resolved that these united colonies are and of right out to be free and independent states, that they are absolved from all allegiance to the British crown. Give ready and women now. Rina Mendes, I'm reading Portuguese. Cidadãos, os seus pais fizeram esta promessa se tornar realidade. Eles tiveram sucesso e vocês desfrutam deste sucesso no dia a dia. A liberdade que foi ganha agora é sua e agora você pode celebrar este aniversário. O 4 de julho é o primeiro grande evento da história da sua nação, a própria âncora do seu futuro destino. Mark Lindy, I'm not reading Swedish, I'm reading it in English. <laughs> Fellow citizens, I am not wanting in respect for the fathers of this republic. The signers of the Declaration of Independence were brave men. I cannot contemplate their great deeds with less than admiration. They were statesmen, patriots, and heroes, and for the good they did and for the principles they contended for. I will unite with you to honor their memory. Good job. Now, I know Joseph is here to read number nine, but I don't think Donna made it. Is Donna here? So I need a volunteer to read number 10 in English, all right? Anne will do that. Joseph is here. Maggie, did you come? Is Maggie here in French? So I need someone to volunteer to read 12 in English. Someone from the crowd, maybe in back of Anne, to read 12. Come on, you can do it. All right, you can do 12. And I need someone to volunteer to read 13 in English. So hop up. All right. So Joseph, you are next with number nine. Hi, I'm Joseph Sherry, and I will be reading uh, number nine. I am uh, from the Haitian Artist Assembly of Massachusetts. They loved their country better than their own private interests. And all will concede that it is a rare virtue that ought to commit respect. He who will intelligently lay down his life for his country is a man whom it is not in human nature to despise. Your fathers staked their lives, their fortunes, and their sacred honor on the cause of their country. and Beauregard English. They were peace men, but they preferred revolution to peaceful submission to bondage. They were quiet men, but they did not shrink from agitating against oppression. They showed forbearance, but they knew its limits. They believed in order, but not in the order of tyranny. With them, nothing was settled that was not right. With them, Justice, liberty, and humanity were final, not slavery and oppression. You may well cherish the memory of such men. They were great in their day and generation. Their solid manhood stands out the more as we contrast with it these degenerate times. Again, it is time to read uh, in uh, Haitian Creole. Tout ça qui posé était bien calculé. Nous pas capable de dire même bagaille de politiciens je dis. Les ancêtres nous yo, t'es qu'une vision qui était claire à coup de l'eau qu'on croyait. Une vision qui était ouais développement nation dans le temps qu'à venir. Bah yo honneur à respect. Reconnaître que t'es passé mon travail. Reconnaître Bell calls, you tap on your body. But you can see the problem you take on country. The ancient founder of the Republic, 
te mette sous pied un système qui grandit et qui continue à développer jeudi à jusqu'à présent. I'm Reverend Rachel Tedesco, and I'm of the First Parish UU Church in Bridgewater, and I act as the uh, community minister for the congregation. <coughs> My business, if I have any here today, is with the present. The accepted time with God and his cause is the ever-loving now. We have to do with the past only as we can make it useful to the present and to the future. <coughs> Now is the time, the important time. Your fathers have lived, died, and have done their work, and have done much of it well. You live and must die, and you must do your work. You have no right to enjoy a child's share in the labor of your fathers, unless your children are to be blessed by your labors. You have no right to wear out and waste the hard-earned fame of your fathers to cover your indolence. My name is Fran Jeffries, and I'll be reading in English. Fellow citizens, pardon me. Allow me to ask, why am I called upon to speak here today? What have I, or those I represent, to do with your national independence? Are the great principles of political freedom and of natural justice embodied in that Declaration of Independence extended to us? And am I, therefore, called upon to bring our humble offering to the national altar and to confess the benefits and express devout gratitude for the blessings resulting from your independence to us? So, John Rosowskis, and I'll be doing um, paragraphs 14 and 15 in English. Interesting quick story is um, when I was at the library doing the translations, um, as you can see, 14 and 15, very brief, but the actual formal translation was much, much longer. So, uh, I think I'm a little bit more comfortable doing the next two in English. Would to God, both for your sakes and ours, that an affirmative answer could be truthfully returned to these questions, then would my task be light and my burden easy and delightful. But such is not the state of the case. I say it with a sad sense of disparity between us. I am not included within the pale of this glorious anniversary. Your high independence only reveals the immeasurable distance between us. So Vernell is going to read 16, but we need volunteers to read 17 and 18. So Susan, come on up and do 17. Who would like to do 18? Okay. Sherry Lee is going to do 19, and I need a volunteer to do 20. All right, got right in line, 20. And then Ashton, you'll bring up the, the um, end of that line as 21, okay? All right, so Renal, you are next. Both microphones, name okay. and language. My name is Renal Williams, and I'll be reading in English. And, um, <clears throat> The blessing in which you this day rejoice are not enjoyed in common. The rich inheritance of justice, liberty, prosperity, and independence bequeathed by your fathers is shared by you, not by me. The sunlight that brought life and healing to you has brought stripes and death to me. This 4th of July is yours, not mine. You may rejoice, I must mourn. To drag a man in fetters into the grand illuminated temple of liberty and call upon him to join you in joyous anthems were in human mockery and sacrilegious irony. Do you mean citizens to mock me by asking me to speak today, fellow citizens, above your national 
tumultuous joy, I hear the mournful wail of millions whose chains, heavy and grievous, yesterday are today rendered more intolerable by the jubilee shouts that reach them. My name is Susan Nicastro. My subject, then fellow citizens, is American slavery. I shall see this day from the slave's point of view, standing here, identified with the American bondsman, making his wrongs mine, I do not hesitate to declare with all my soul that the character and conduct of this nation never looked blacker to me than on this 4th of July. Whether we turn to the declarations of the past or to the professions of the present, the conduct of the nation seems equally hideous and revolting. America is false to the past, false to the present, and solemnly binds herself to be false to the future. My name is Kevin Devine. Yeah. Standing with God and the crushed and bleeding, the bleeding slave on this occasion, I will in the name of humanity which is outraged, in the name of liberty which is fettered, and in the name of the Constitution and the Bible which are disregarded and trampled upon, dare to call in question and to denounce with all the emphasis that I can command, everything that serves to perpetuate slavery, the great sin and the shame of America. I will not equivocate. I will not excuse. Excuse. <clears throat> I will use the severest language I can command, and, and yet not one word shall escape me that any man whose judgment is not uh, blinded by prejudice, or who is not at heart a slaveholder, shall not confess to be right and just. Good, a Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Cheryl Lee Hopwood, and I'm going to read paragraph 19 in English. I fancy I hear some of my audience say, it is just in this circumstance that you and your brother abolitionists failed to make a favorable impression on the public mind. Would you argue more and denounce less? Would you persuade more and, and rebuke less? Your cause which would be more likely to succeed, but I submit where all is plain, there is nothing to be argued. What point in the anti-slavery creed would you have me argue? My name is Ray Mack, and I'm, a, uh, I'm excited to be a member of this wonderful planet. <laughs> but I also live in West Bridgewater, and I'm reading in English. Must I undertake to prove that the slave is a man? The slaveholders themselves acknowledge that in the enactment of laws for their government, they acknowledge it when they punish disobedience on the part of the slave. They have 72 crimes in the state of Virginia which if committed by a black man, subject him to the punishment of death, while only two of the same crimes will subject a white man to the like punishment. What is this but the acknowledgement that a slave is a moral, intellectual, and responsible being? Southern statue books are covered with 
books are covered with a commandment forbidden under severe fines and penalty. The teaching of the slave to read or to write. When you can point to any such laws in the referendum to the beasts of the field, then I may constant argue the manhood of the slave. When the dogs in your street, when the foals in the air, when the cattle on your hill, hills, when the fish of the sea, and the reptiles that prowl shall be unable to distinguish the slave from a brute. Then will I argue with you that the slave is a man. Good afternoon, my name is uh, Charles Lowe, Lucien. I'll be reading uh, section 22. In English, for the present, it's not enough to affirm the equal manhood of the Negro race. Isn't it astonishing that while we are ploughing, planting, and reaping, using all kinds of mechanical tools, erecting houses, constructing bridges, building ships, working in metals and brass, iron, copper, silver, and gold, that while we are reading, writing, and ciphering, acting as clerks, merchants, and secretaries, having amongst lawyers, doctors, ministers, poets, authors, editors, orators, and teachers, that while we are engaged in all manner of enterprises common to other men, digging gold in California, capturing the whale in the Pacific, feeding sheep and cattle on the hillside, living, moving, Loving, thinking, planning, living in families as husbands, wives, and children, and above all, confessing and worshiping the Christian God, and looking hopefully for life and immortality beyond the grave that we are called upon to prove that we are men. I'll be reading in Haitian Creole 23 and 24. Esco atanopum de Montreo que l'homme gain droit pour libre et libre, que le capable disposer de tête des gens le ou fin déclarer et ou fin admettre ça déjà. Est-ce que vous voulez rentrer dans nos polémiques sur l'aspect légal ou bien illégal de l'esclavage Est-ce que l'institution de l'esclavage là, c'est un causé qui suit une logique à pas Est-ce que raison pour expliquer le chita sur l'application des graines gauche principe de la justice qui fait le difficile pour comprendre Qui j'ai un aspect physique point T'as supposé aujourd'hui pour le camper devant un américain blanc, pour le d'accord que liberté son droit naturel que tout chrétien vivant supposé gagner. Si je t'ai fait ça, je t'ai passé tête pour une bêtise et en même temps, je t'ai insulté l'intelligence par or. Pas de monde sous tes ça qui ne connaît que l'esclavage, ce n'est pas un bagaille qui est bon pour personne. 26, 26. Qui ça Qui ça que moi dois démontrer que son mauvais bagaille, l'autre est un chrétien vivant, un bon bête, l'autre vole la liberté, l'autre fait le travail, son va payer, l'autre péché pour la relation avec l'autre pour ne pas aller, l'autre parle jusqu'à ce qu'on marque pour doul, l'enchaîne, ou vendre pour ne pas qu'il n'y pas besoin, ou séparer les familles, ou racheter dans, ou pour les poules, ou pas bal manger en façon de faire baisser la tête devant Bethlehem. Est-ce que moi dois démontrer qu'il y a un système qui chita sous sang sous saleté, sous pollution, son système qui n'est pas bon. Non, non, je ne vais pas perdre du temps avec courage, mais nous exercice comme ça. My name is Lynn, and I'll be reading in Italian. Che cosa quindi è lasciato a discutere? E che la schiavuti non è divina? E che Dio non ce l'ha fatta? e che i nostri sacerdote hanno torto, c'è blasfemia in quel pensiero. C'è un disumano, non puoi essere divino. C'è puoi crede a una cosa del genere, non posso. Il tempo per questa discussione è passato. Good afternoon, my name is Jerry Burr, and I'll be reading uh, number 26. At a time like this, scorching irony, not a convincing argument, is needed. 
oh, had I the ability and could I reach the nation's ear, I would, today, pour out a fiery stream of biting ridicule, blasting reproach, withering sarcasm, and stern rebuke. For it is not light that is needed, but fire. It is not the gentle shower, but thunder. We need the storm, the whirlwind, and the earthquake. The feeling of the nation must be quickened. The conscience of the nation must be roused. The propriety of the nation must be startled. The hypocrisy of the nation must be exposed. And its crimes against God and man must be proclaimed and denounced. Willie Wilson, and I'm reading paragraph 27. What to the American slave is your 4th of July? I answer, a day that reveals to him more than all other days in the year the gross injustice and cruelty to which he is the constant victim. To him, your celebration is a sham, your boasted liberty an unholy license, your national greatness swelling vanity, your sounds of rejoicing are empty and heartless, your denunciations of tyrants, brass fronted impudence, your shouts of liberty and equality, hollow mockery, your prayers and hymns, your sermons and thanksgivings, with all your religious parade and the solemnity are to him mere bombast, fraud, deception, and piety and hypocrisy, a thin veil to cover up crimes which would disgrace a nation of savages. So I have a volunteer who's gonna read 28 and 29, but I need a volunteer for 30. Okay, come on up and you'll do 30. And I need one for 31. All right, come up and do 31. And where is Rita? Rita, were you going to do 32 in Spanish? Okay, 32. And where are we now? Do we have 30? I need someone to volunteer for 33. All right, come on up, 33. And 34. So 33 is the gentleman with the beard, and 34 is the gentleman with the mustache. Who hasn't had a chance yet? Who has not read? I need a 35. Okay, you get in line according to your paragraph. Okay, come on up. Perfect, okay. So 28, your name and your language, okay? My name is Rosita Waltower, and my, my only language that I know is English. Um, I might add, uh, this is interesting to me because in 2001, uh, my family uh, reunion uh, in Connecticut traced the roots uh, to Frederick Douglass. Uh, so I have to do my homework. So maybe next year I'll tell you how. But all I know is the Bailey family reunion out of, uh, uh, the tie-in was out of uh, Baltimore. This is not a nation on the earth guilty of practices more shockingly, shocking and bloody than are the people of these United States at this very hour. Go where you may, search where you will, roam through all the monarchies, monarchies and death positions of the old world. Search out every abuse and when you have found the last, Lay your facts by the side of the everyday practices of this nation, and you will say with me that for revolting barbarity and shameless hypocrisy, America reigns without a rival. Take the American slave trade, which is especially prosperous just now, and carry it on in all the large towns and cities in one half of the Confederacy. In several states, this trade is a chief source of wealth. It is called the internal slave trade. In order to divert from the horror with which 
the foreign slave trade is contemplated. The trade has long since been <coughs> denounced by this gov government as piracy, as an excarable <coughs> traffic. To arrest it, this nation keeps a squadron of immense cost on the coast of Africa. Everywhere in this country, it is safe to speak of this foreign slave trade as a most inhuman traffic, opposed alike to the laws of God and of man. It is, however, a notable fact that while such an excoration is poured out by Americans upon this engaged in this foreign slave trade, the men engaged in the slave trade between the states pass without condemnation, and their business is deemed honorable. My name is Michelle Roos, and I'm from Brockton. I'm going to be reading in English. Behold the practical operation of this internal slave trade, the American slave trade, sustained by American politics and American religion. Here you will see men and women reared like swine for the market. You know what is a swine drover? I will show you a man drover. They inhabit all our southern states. They perambulate the country and crowd the highways of the nation with droves of human stock. You will see one of these human flesh joggers armed with pistol, whip, and bowie knife driving a company of 100 men, women, and children from the Potomac to the slave market at New Orleans. These wretched people are to be sold singly or in lots to suit purchaser, purchasers. They are food for the cotton field and the deadly sugar mill. My name is Nancy Hedrick Devine, and I'll be reading paragraph 31. Mark the sad progression as it moves warily along in the inhuman wretch who drives them. Hear his savage yells and his blood-chilling oaths as he hurries on his affrighted captives. There, see the old man with locks thinned and gray. Cast one glance, if you please, upon that young mother whose shoulders are bare to the scorching sun. Her briny tear is falling on the brow of the babe in her arms. See, too, that girl of 13, weeping, yes. Weeping as she thinks of the mother from whom she has been torn. The drove moves tardily. Heat and sorry have near, sorrow have nearly consumed their strength. Suddenly, you hear a quick snap, like the discharge of a <coughs> rifle. The fetters clank and the chain rattles simultaneously. Your ears are saluted with a scream that seems to have torn its way to the center of your soul. The crack you heard was the sound of the slave whip. The scream you heard was from the women, woman you saw with the babe. Her speed had faltered on the way, under the weight of her child and her chains. That gash on her shoulder tells her to move on. Rita Mendes, and I'm going to be reading in Spanish. Siga al grupo a Nueva Orleans. Este presente en la subasta. Ves a los hombres examinados como caballos. Ves las formas de las mujeres reveladas en una manera ruda y brutal. Ves el impactante mirada de los compradores de esclavos estadounidenses. Ves el grupo conducido, vendido y separado para siempre. Y nunca olvides los profundos y tristes solosos que surgieron. Dígame, ciudadanos, ¿dónde bajó el sol? Puede presenciar un espectáculo más diabólico e impactante. Sin embargo, eso no es más que una mirada al comercio de esclavos estadounidense, tal como existe en el momento en la parte gobernante de los Estados Unidos. Good afternoon, my name is Trevor 
Bruce, and I'll be reading paragraph 33 in English. Fellow citizens, this murderous traffic is, today, in active operation in this boasted republic. In the solitude of my spirit, I see clouds of dust raised on the highways of the south. I see the bleeding footsteps. I hear the doleful wail of fettered humanity on the way to the slave markets where the victims are to be sold like horses, sheep, and swine, knocked off to the highest bidder. There I see the tenderest ties ruthlessly broken to gratify the lust, caprice, and rapacity of the buyers and sellers of men. Hello again, my name is Kevin Devine. I'm reading uh, par uh, paragraph 34. By an act of, Congre of the American Congress, not yet two years old, slavery has been nationalized in its most horrible and revolting form. Mason and Dixon's line has been obliterated. New York has become Virginia, and the power to hold, haunt, and sell women men and children as slaves remains no longer a mere state institution, but it is now an institution of the whole United States. Good afternoon, my name is Shireen. I am reading um, number 35, and I'm from um, right next door in Eastern Mass. Um, here goes. The power is coextensive with the Star Spangled Banner and American Christianity. Where these go may also go the merciless slave hunter. Where these are, man is not scared. Here, sorry. He is a bird of the sportsman's gun, but that most foul and fiendish of all human decrees, the liberty and person of every man are put in peril. Your broad, your broad Republican domain is hunting ground for men. All right, now I will read 36. But this is your last chance. We're getting towards the end. So who would like to volunteer for 37? Who has not had a chance? 37, who has not had a chance? OK, Miles will do 37. Um, 38, I have in Mandarin Chinese. 39, I need a volunteer who hasn't had a chance to read 39. Okay, Michelle will do 39. Merle, you're going to do 40. Paula, you're going to do 41 in Greek. And so the last chance will be 42. Last chance for someone who hasn't had a try. All right, I'll hosey it for myself. So 36. Your lawmakers have commanded all good citizens to engage in this hellish sport. Your president, your secretary of state, enforce as a duty you owe to your free and glorious country and to your God that you do this accursed thing. Not fewer than 40 Americans have within the past two years been hunted down and without a moment's warning hurried away in chains and consigned to slavery and excruciating torture. Some of these have wives and children dependent on them for bread, but of this no account was made. The right of the hunter to his prey stands superior to the right of marriage and to all rights in this republic, the rights of God included. Jackson, and I'll be reading paragraph 37. For black men, there are neither law nor justice, humanity nor religion. The fugitive slave law makes mercy to them a crime, 
and bribes the judge who tries them. An American judge gets $10 for every victim he consigns to slavery and five when he fails to do so. The oath of any two villains is sufficient under this hell black enactment to send the most pious and exemplary black man into the remorseless jaws of slavery. His own testimony is nothing. He can bring no witness for himself. The minister of American justice is bound by the law to hear but one side, and that side is the side of the oppressor. Let this damning fact be perpetually told. Let it be thunder and around the world that in tyrant killing, king hating, people loving, democratic, Christian American, the seats of justice are filled with judges who hold their offices under an open and parable bribe and are bound in deciding in the case of man's liberty to hear only his accusers. Now, paragraph 38, my friend Bin, who teaches in China through the magic of technology, sent this recording. So let's see if we can play it. It's amazing, isn't it? You get an email from China. Michelle Dubois, I'm going to read 39. Americans, your Republican politics, not less than your Republican religion, are fragrantly inconsistent. You boast of your love of liberty, your superior civilization, and your pure Christianity, while the whole political power of the nation is solemnly pledged to support the perpetual, perpetuate and to perpetuate the enslavement of three million of your countrymen, you hurl your anathemas at the crowded, crowned heads, headed tyrants of Russia and Austria, and pride yourself on your democratic institutions, while you yourself can consent to be the mere tool and bodyguards of the tyrants of Virginia and Carolina. You invite to your shores fugitives of oppression from abroad, honor them with banquets, greet them with ovations, cheer them, toast them, salute them, protect them, and pour out your money to them like water. But the fugitive from your own land, you advertise, hunt, arrest, shoot, and kill. You know, I need to say that this still continues today, but some of us enslave ourselves voluntarily, voluntarily through drug addiction and everything else. You know, I'm just talking because I'm a recovering addict. And, uh, you know, I know a lot of people who are dying as a direct result of a disease of addiction, but it's like pure hell. Um, you, discourse eloquently, you discourse eloquently on the dignity of labor, yet you sustain a system which, in its very essence, casts a stigma upon labor. You can bear your bosom to the storm of British artillery or throw off a, 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 a three-penny tax on tea and yet wring the last hard-earned farthing from the grasp of the black laborer on your, of your country. You profess to believe that of one blood, God made all nations of men to dwell on the face of all the earth and hath commanded all men everywhere to love one another. Yet you notoriously hate and glory in your hatred all men whose skins are not colored like your own.
Good afternoon. My name is Paula Kokoris Oderno, and I live in Brockton. And I'm going to read uh, my paragraph, which is number 41 in Greek. Dimosia to vilonis prosta se olon ton cosma ke ginesi pleon cantonitis apo etutos otan aptos o cosmas a perigrasta tiloni to exis. Kratisu gera otis alithias aptes yati ine aptapothiketas oti diladi oli i antropic ine iosi. Oti o dimiorgos mas evhimise me sige chimera ana arexerete dicamata ana mesa sta dicamata afta ine to dicamata sto zoistin eleftheria ke pano apo ola afta to ana hireto dicemo sto taxiri yatin anazistisi tis eftichias Chiamo esi dia filitis ta acoluda me zbenos opos na ekane ke odikos tu Thomas Jefferson. I pateres mas efligarmo mesa apota vesma ton katakition meto acoludo afti ke etsi xenikisan tin Epant nastasi in a calitera, nazis ya ora elefteros ma para oloclira cronia sclamomenos. Etsi acrivos e praxe to ana erthomo tu plitiosima. Well, I guess my parents' six years of Greek school paid off <laughs> 50 years later. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Paula. And you know, in his travels, Frederick Douglass did visit Greece. So I will read 42. Willie, could you be prepared to uh, read 43? And Charlotte, could you be prepared to read 44 in English? And then we'll all read 40, uh, the last one where it says all together. So 42. <coughs> Fellow citizens, I will not enlarge further on your national inconsistencies. The existence of slavery in this country brands your republicanism as a sham, your humanity as a base pretense, and your Christianity as a lie. It destroys your moral power abroad. It corrupts your politicians at home. It saps the foundation of religion. It makes your name a hissing and a byword to a mocking earth. Be warned, a horrible reptile is coiled up in your nation's bosom. The venomous creature is nursing at the tender breast of your youthful republic. For the love of God, tear away, fling from you this hideous monster, and let the weight of 20 millions crush and destroy, crush and destroy it forever. Paragraph 43. Allow me to say in conclusion, notwithstanding the dark picture I have this day presented on the state of the nation, I do not despair of this country. There are forces in operation which must inevitably work the downfall of slavery. I therefore leave off where I began, with hope, while drawing encouragement from the Declaration of Independence the great principles it contains, and the genius of American institutions. My spirit is cheered by the obvious tendencies of the age. Nations do not now stand in the same relation to each other that they did ages ago. No nation can now shut itself up from the surrounding world and trot round in the same old path of its fathers without interference. My name is Jean Charlot Lucien, and I'm also here on behalf 
of uh, Toussaint Louverture, who masterminded the abolition of slavery in Haiti, and who was also an inspiration to Frederick Douglass in Haiti. But 44. The time was when such could be done. But a change has now come over the affairs of mankind. World cities and empires have become unfashionable. The arm of commerce has borne away the gates of the strong city. Intelligence is penetrating the darkest corners of the globe. Wind, steam, and lightning are its chartered agents. Oceans no longer divide, but link nations together. From Boston to London is now a holiday excursion. Space is comparatively annihilated. Thoughts expressed on one side of the Atlantic are distinctly heard on the other. In the fervent aspirations of William Lloyd Garrison, I say he let every heart join in saying it. God speak the day when human brought shall cease to flow. In every time be understood the claims of human brotherhood, and each return for evil good, not blow for blow. That day will come all fuels to end and change into a faithful friend each fall. Thank you. Thank you so much. You know, when you hear those words, do you say to yourself, man, oh man, does it sound familiar? Does it sound like what we're going through today? But remember, Douglas said, do not give up. Change every foe into a friend. And that's what I have learned from him. Do not give up. So I want to thank all of you for coming and participating. I hope that you all go home inspired and feeling good about this wonderful community that we have in Brockton that is so diverse, that's represented here through Mr. Douglas, Cape Verdean shipbuilders in New Bedford, women, um, the Irish through Daniel O'Connell, veterans through the Massachusetts 54th. He connects us all that way. And I think that his wife might have a very good recipe for pie, Willie. What do you think? Anna Murray Douglas was a pretty good housekeeper and a pretty good cook. So we invite you all to come back, enjoy a piece of pie with real whipped cream. One of them is um, sugar-free, I think, but most of them are not good for you, but that's okay. <laughs> Once is all right. Let's say thank you to Brockton Community Access. Let's say thank you to Mass Humanities for their sponsorship. Let's say thank you to the Haitian Artists Assembly of Massachusetts, to Criola Sumitas, to the Brockton Historical Society, and to my BFF, Frederick Douglass. And last but not least, a church is always a place where you're safe in a storm. So thank you, Miles, for making us safe in this storm. So enjoy each other's company, and thank you for coming. <laughs>